<laughs> I mean, what? How big right. could it be better? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, look. I, all I'm saying is, okay. I'm not saying anything. I'm gonna leave it alone, man. Are you ready for sports in the transition? Man, I'm ready. I'm ready for sports. I think we have the proper, the proper uh, visual aids. <laughs> you gotta have those visual aids. Well, the visual aids look good, but you know, hey, no matter what they see at PackStereo.tv forward slash live. Uh, we're going to hit a subject no matter what, Mario, because it it takes prominence over everything. And we're going to cover some of the stuff we didn't get to cover yesterday because we had a, a, a special show. Ah, uh, yes. Which we couldn't even address the sports. Couldn't even address. We had a special guest artist who released their... Science. That cut, Here I Am, and Father MC following them along, setting the tradition in the trail. So, you know, most part, man, I enjoyed it. So, look, I don't even have to tell you the two words that mean sports right now as it relates to what's the hot topic in sports. Brett right Favre. Now. Okay, there you go. See, I told you it was hot. I know. And I told you he was going to play. Yeah, I know you did. You did. You did. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You did say that. Okay, now. But, Vic, don't you think it was really exceptional? I don't know if the people caught. That's the part that got me, you guys. This what is it? why I love the story, though, Vic. What? So, people who you're about to play with, who oh well, no, oh, let's say it a different way. Members of the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings who want him to play. Right. Who are getting his tweets about his foot not healing fast enough. Right. They take it upon themselves to go down to his house. That's unbelievable. Drive man. down to his house, fly whatever way. They get a bunch of them, go down to his house. Right. Show up at his house. So, you know, Brett Favre, who's, who's, no, he, this is the kind of cat he is, though. Right. So his wife starts cooking steaks. <laughs> And everybody spins the, the night and all this stuff. <laughs> and they say what they talked to Brett Favre about, Vic, was about the fun and joy of playing football. I know. They they brought it, what they, you know, what they said, you know, art imitates, reflects life, what have you. And it's more than just a job. And I think something along the way, because Brett is contagious, man. You know, his, he, he, his see, style. That's why I like it. That's yeah, why I like right. it. He loves the game. He's a yeah. competitor. Yes. It's like he he do it for free, right? <laughs> right. He would do it. I mean, that's how you know you do stuff because you would do it anyway. You want him to get paid for it. Right. But if, even if you didn't, you'd still be doing it. <laughs> right. Like, like us. Right. <laughs> but, and, and, and the part, you know, that Martin makes it so interesting is, is that he, you know, when you look at the, the the thing that he's done as it relates to surprising the uh, players that he plays with, the butt slap where he gets you and hits you hard. Have you ever seen? They no, do I it? hate the butt slap. No, I no. played football. Oh, did you? S- and I wasn't all into the butt slap. No, but you see how hard he does it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I, and I don't even like him soft. <laughs> I hard soft. I just you know leave my butt alone. <laughs> well, hey, look, let's just do this. All right. Let's look at Tavares Jackson because he's left out. Do we get to look at him? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, I kind of forgot, Vic. Yeah, come on I, now. I got to ask you because you know better than me, Vic. Because I kind of got lost, Vic. Right. Since I haven't seen him play in so long, I can't remember if he was a good. And wow, you know what? Man. The worst thing about Tavares. What is that? Is that his name is too close to Jamarcus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hey, hey, I'm sorry. And you first you think is first thing when you say I say is that. When they say his name, I was is that that, wait, which one of them? Was that the one at no, You just, was man. Was that the one at uh, Raiders? Oh, I'm just saying that's the same. You got him in the news and he's not in the news. Okay. Well, right. I'm just saying because, you, Vic, I wonder, that's what I'm saying. Right. You And I'm asking you, is, is he really a good quarterback? And, 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 and how is he going to be in the backup role? And, Vic, right. how is he handling the issue with Brett Favre coming and going? I think that's an interesting side story. Well, they do say this. There's one thing they said. He has handled it almost the best way you can humbled his job his focus his role as opposed to the questions that's being asked how do you feel about them going down there asking Brett Favre please come back as a reflection on is that lack of confidence in you and everybody's not rallying around you you got the troop going down there when it's almost at 11th hour to say Brett you got to come on back man so the bottom line is how does that make Tavares feel? Well, there's some wonderful examples of people riding the bench who were waiting. I think of Steve McNair. Right. Behind Warren Moon. Right. The, you know, and you know, and stuff like that. I mean, remember how long it took for McNair? Right. To kind of to get his prominence. So there's some of them they don't get known. It takes them a while. Right. So, you know, you wonder. But I I, I was just wondering because I don't know I, it's been so it's been two years. It's, 
I don't know what kind of a quarterback. I'm I'm gonna say this. I, I'll say this much. Some quarterbacks are projects, and you know they're projects. And then when you think about the scenario that they had Tavares Jackson there before Brett Favre even came to the team. Right. So they, they didn't see that this would be an opportunity for Brett to come to Minnesota. They were dealing with a project. All of a sudden, guess what? The gateway comes and swings around, retire. I'm leaving Green Bay. Guess who got him now? Well, he still may be a project, though, because here's the thing. Isn't it the smart? You know, no matter what, Brett Favre is not around for a bunch of seasons. The whole, so the smart right. thing is to play this right. No, that's why I think he's smart. I think he's smart. He says, okay, at most, how many years does Brett have left? At most. And I would go, if you go two, I'm shocking. But you know what? Yeah, Brett that's can, what I'm saying. Yeah. If you go two, I'm shocked. Yeah. Right. Two would be the max. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's probably this is it. Yeah. So now that we know that Brett Favre is going to be playing probably, and it looks like uh, a leg that or a foot, I'm sorry, that is not 100%. Nobody really cares about whether he's healthy enough. But here's the part. Do you think he will perform better, equal to last season, or worse? Because remember, last season was his, was his best production season as a quarterback. I think he will come pretty close. You think so? Yeah, I think he still has. I think the issue with the foot is rest and getting the proper rest. What And he's such a veteran. He doesn't need the same kind of practice. They need right. the physical conditioning to get right. And they know. But in terms of his head and knowing what to do, that he don't need no practice for that. Right now, you here's he just needs to be tuning up his body. That's all he needs. I, now I agree. Now here's the part that gets me on this because one thing I have to admit, people have a short memory when it comes to the last season because they said, "Oh man, New Orleans is going to be straight up the favorite right now." But every year you get a crop of players who step up like quarterbacks in their first year across all positions on the field and step up and make that team that was close to getting to the Super Bowl way better. The part that I think that exposes teams like New Orleans is did they get way better with this last season and this rookie crop? Not really. They basically are working with the same cast they're working with. New York Jets got a lot better. And they're and they look good and confident now. Still, it's preseason. Wait, wait, wait. wait no, oh, wait. Okay, because you're saying they're better now. Because you weren't so sure before. No, I wasn't so sure about the running back as it relates because, to the running right, game. Right, because that was the thing. We weren't right. sure if they were better or the same. The same they right. shifted some people in and out. They did, and I, and the part that I had to go look at because I was speculating the same way. I didn't pay attention to. It's like fantasy sports. I didn't pay attention to all the positions that they had recruited or they drafted. And the traded. shift in philosophy because. Right. The way they use LT in the preseason game, didn't right. that sort of change? It did my mind. Yes. I said, I forgot how, well, I hate to say that. I forgot how good LT was as a receiver. Yeah. And going to this, using him in the offense in the way they did. Right. They, I said, oh, that's a really great way. You know who reminded me of? You know, the, yeah, they had players in the past, like yeah. the, the, those spot players who were right. known. The Giants had, I forgot his name now. Really? Of the player who was, they, they're just known for being those utility players that can come in, catch the ball, run yeah. the ball, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, you know what he reminds me of, what you will call an older version of how they were using Reggie Bush. Coming right. out the backfield, he, he, they're going to be utility. You know, what did they say? Running backs by committee. There's no one running back. And Green, I believe his last name, I hope it, I think it's Sean Green, is the other running back. Looked very good. And so the part that they were talking about, which I paid attention to, I didn't see this before. I speculated on the loss right. of Thomas Jones, and now I got to see him. And right. I said, whoa, he runs with his shoulder pads down and forward. And, and the way he runs, I said, okay, that changed. Now I see what they, sa- what they said. Here's Thomas Jones. We're going to get Sean Green, and we're going to get LT. So we're going to, we're going to actually expand the, quarter, the running back's role. Thomas Jones was just running back. Right. Now they got Sean. And expand the offense, right. too, because the, you know. LT. That was nice Out now. of the backfield. So, I, and you know, look, here's one of those things where I say you got to go study the game, know the game. And right. I'm not saying it's this, but I feel totally different. The way I feel about Dallas when I'm going, all right, Dallas, no matter how much on paper, you guys look like you got an offensive issue, and it's in the preseason. Dallas Cowboys are not producing points. That's an issue to me. Now, there's, they say wait till after the third, maybe the third game of the preseason, because the first two games are throwaway, maybe the third at most. Then you got to get your players in there because you only got a couple of weeks before you go into what they call the treatment of the game. Because game one, you're supposed to bring it, bring it. 
Cowboys don't look good on offense. You know, Vic, I would only hesitate saying that not all coaches approach the preseason in the same way. Right. Many of them use it, do use it specifically to look at certain things. Right. And I'm not sure that that Dallas certainly uses it the same way as other folks. For example, the New York game was actually different because it had to do with, you know, bragging rights and all right. this kind of stuff. Right. So they were playing more for heart. LT – because there was also this issue of him, you know, being over the hill or whatever. Right. He's been an active, very active person in training camp. And they had an active training camp with a lot of, you know, interaction, a lot more hitting kinds of stuff. Right. So they approached it totally different. Right. So in that sense, I don't totally know if it has the same meaning. But we do have to see. But, I, but I, it did seem like the Jets... Damn near wanted to win bad. Right. I'm not sure if, if all the other teams, like I said, have that same commitment to winning right. in the preseason. Many of them just don't. Right. And I only look at really the first two quarters of the game because that's when you're oh, regular. That's a good point. The regular, I see when the Giants beat the Jets, even though they beat them 31 to 16, I didn't pay attention to the second half because that's not the team that's going to be on the field. The first half is the team, the game where it's won because all the players on the field. Dallas, that's what I'm looking at. They had their regular players on the field, the team that's supposed to be stocked the best, and you go and look at Washington blow out of Buffalo like 40-something to 16. Well, I said, well, look at the first half first, pro, you know, starters against starters. And I still see that. I, I see it. I don't know what it is. But they said, look, if they're not producing and they're holding back and they're the starters, that's not a good example. To, and you really are showing your wares because you're allowing other players who are drafted to come up and creep up into your position. So you I, gotta just, produce. I just still see Dallas number one in that division. And I think the question would be uh, the battle between New York and Washington Redskins, whether or not the Washington Redskins right. have made a big enough change. Right. So, because some people are saying New York, I, one of the commentators said he didn't think the Giants was going to make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. They have to recover from that injury year they had was just so devastating to them. And then when you lose a year, you just can't come and grab it back no. because everybody got better. So you, you're coming back with the players that you had from injury and other players have been plugged in. So I agree with you. You know, I can see why they're hesitant. But I think I think the Giants will be there to a certain extent. But I, now I think they took a hit because with Manning having that little cut and then he can't wear that helmet over that fresh cut, he had to get 12 inches. I mean, excuse me, 12 stitches. That oh, per- they can fix that. Well, they can, but they said, you know, the part about what's going to happen is is you'll be the one that's saying, who's going to hit him where the helmet hits his head, where he had to have 12 stitches. Well, yeah, stitches, they'll well, bleed, they'll bleed. But, but, but that's the whole point. They're not supposed to have, you know, when they're bleeding. Yeah, he'll sit down. I mean, at least yeah. it's, not, it's not a big physical thing. No, no, they didn't say that. That's what they're saying. They said the part they're not worried about, he wants to play right now. Yeah, because you can cut right. the little pads out and put a pad on a cut. Right. right, and that's what I thought. So maybe it's possum, maybe it's something else. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's playing. playing games. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to use a different animal, and eater. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, everybody knows about the statistics. The highlight of the game with the New York Jets and, and Giants was Victor Cruz. He looked like he's about to bump somebody out of their position as a receiver. I, the one at hand to catch is everybody's talking about, even to the point that LeBron even uh, – did a Twitter about him. So Victor Cruz just went from an undrafted player, <laughs> come on the field, highlight of the game, Monday night game on national TV, and just wore everybody out, reinforcing Dar- Darrell Revis saying, y'all couldn't guard him. I guess I got to come back. I in. think Darrell <laughs> Revis has been smart because all of a sudden – they're going to have to deal because they're going to want him bad. They need it. Right. And I think he looked around at the teammates he had and said, I'm so far above these cats, you got to pay me twice what homeboy <laughs> there you go. makes. And so, uh, yeah, get everything you can. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, for the most part, I thought it was a good showing because uh, the part that I said, here, you let this guy come in who's undrafted. And he, I mean, three TDs. He scored all three t- TDs. And I'm saying, dude, it's not like.